It's like with oil paint or painting or something, you know, a friend of mine said, paint a hundred and see if you're good at it. You know, after a hundred, maybe you'll know. made our excessive records. <laughs> we'll probably make another one next time. Shortest record we've ever made. It's, it's, it's tight and it's concise. It was all based on this brand new idea to us of let's write the songs before we record them. They were easy to write. Lucky for me, we were just kind of evocative of something right away. This ain't homework. If you can have something hit you and you do it, then you just, it's like a... It's, it's happening quick and it just gets to where it needs to go. And, capturing, you know, lightning in a bottle. out there that has better lyrics, uh, to be honest. I mean, it makes me feel really proud to be up here providing some sort of background for that. Practiced on my sins, never gonna let me win. Under everything, just another human being. You can listen to songs that have meaning, but never know what they mean for, you know, decades. In this world to make me believe. It always seemed like, you know, the lyrics, they have to be this and they have to be that, or they have to be three-dimensional and they have to... But they don't. That's, that's new for me, too. Kind of participating as an instrument rather than, you know, a storyteller. Writing's great, but there's so many words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's too many options, you know? There's no anticipating what it's going to be until it's done. You start out with everybody bringing in the kitchen sink. At any moment, something fantastic could happen. Sometimes you have your best ideas in the bathroom. <laughs> At any time, 
you could, you know, have this song that, you know, had this guitar part that was always going through, and you pull the guitar part out, and you put a piano over the top of it, and you change the vocal line, and all of a sudden it's a completely different song, and it like happens in the last 30 seconds of making the record. You know, it's like this weird alchemy. This bunch of guys, they write some real challenging stuff and um, and they're not satisfied with kind of normal approaches to music. We really appreciate what comes out of this little combination that we've mutated into. first single, which is fantastic that it turned out. It's a Matt Cameron composition. It's, it's really fun to play bass to those songs because there's a real definite rhythm, and, and the rhythm is Matt's inner rhythm. At this point, they're like a, a Motown rhythm section that no matter what you lay at Jeff and Matt's feet, they can make magic out of anything. I listened to the record last night, and and there's uh, some of the better guitar solos that Mike's ever played on the record. It's more, you know, patterns. He's playing some really incredible patterns. Uh, the Fixer is it's it kind of seemed like kind of linchpin song for the whole record. That song is almost a little bit about Ed working with the whole band and trying to figure out how to make everyone's songs work. incredible, optimistic, a beautiful lyric about uh, a, a, someone who loves to make things better. We sort of have our own thing and it's raw and it has this, it's, it's an imperfect sort of combination of, of personalities. We put a lot of faith in and Ed is sort of the, the artistic director of the record to kind of take bits and pieces from everybody and then like in the end, he ties us together. Cool. It's getting better. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe sometimes as you get older, you have a more keen focus on maintaining your vitality. Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, you, you not only took it for granted, but you kind of pissed on it. You know, oh, I could play that fast, or I could do that, or I could have that kind of energy, but I don't want to, you know, I've done that. <laughs> That being said, I still think that you still need to do that to write certain things that you have to swim out far and tread water. Or I, I still need to. 